Hi guys, a few days ago, Mercury retrograde started and Mercury retrograde happens three times a year. I've talked about it a bunch of times and I have a whole bunch of videos that you can watch uh, from past Mercury retrogrades where I did a video every single day of Mercury retrograde to help us get through it. And I guess I'm kind of doing that with this series right here right now. Uh, but let's talk about Mercury retrograde really fast and what it's all about. Mercury is the planet that if you think about it in terms of like Greek mythology, it goes with Hermes, the messenger god. Okay, who is very quick on his feet. He's thinking two steps ahead all the time. And he is pinging about back and forth, relaying messages hither and yon. Okay, Mercury is the planet that is all about that. It is about messages. Wow, messages, being a messenger, conversations. It's about thinking, it's about thinking ahead. Um, and Mercury retrograde is when we get the backwards of that, okay? And so it's the time where we're not just thinking ahead, we're thinking behind. It's the time to re-everything, review, rethink, reevaluate. okay? We're, we're taking a look at the past where Mercury is usually focused on the future or, or at least the present and like it's thinking ahead. When we have Mercury retrograde, it's time to think about what happened in the past. OK, we're thinking about what went wrong, what went right, what we want to do differently, what we want to do better, what we need to fix so that we can go forward without. Uh, oh, man, sorry, you know, I've been watching too much Twitter or whatever. Um, so we can move forward unburdened by what has been. OK, um, that is the point of Mercury retrograde. When we're using Mercury retrograde intentionally, what we're going to do is kind of make an inventory of what's going on in our lives right now and take a look at what happened in the past to bring us to this point and specifically what in our decision-making process or in our tolerance allowed us to get to this point. Because I think a lot of times we end up where we are not because of active decisions that we made, but because of things that we didn't do and we just kind of like floated about until we landed here, okay? There are some people that are very proactive and they're off making clear decisions and they're like planning ahead. And, you know, if you're that kind of person, then you look back at where where did my decisions go wrong? What decision should I have made a little differently? If you are more of a sort that kind of floats about through life and now here you are and it wasn't necessarily that you woke up and you were like, oh, I want to have this life right now. It this The life right now is just the natural consequence of floating about all the way down the river. Then today is the day to sit back and say, okay, um, am I happy with what I have tolerated? Am I happy with how I have come here? Okay. Well, the more conscious that we can become of it and start changing our thought processes and we start changing how we're thinking about our lives and the choices that we're making. We start to make new choices. If you're not thrilled about where you are right now, um, today's a great day to ask yourself, what could I do differently? You know, what do I need to do to make things right from a choice I made previously? Um, what do I need to do to change course now? And I really do believe that it's always possible to change course. It is always possible. And in the moment, it feels, it can feel very um, depressing and horrible. <laughs> I'm thinking of my apple tree, okay, in my backyard. And we planted this apple tree. It's like such a long story, but I was planning to buy like a more mature apple tree and that costs more money, like maybe a couple hundred dollars apple tree and put it in. And I had somebody say they wanted to gift me one. And so they gifted me a $49, like super not mature one from Costco. And then I wanted it facing in this particular direction. I wanted it with the Honeycrisp facing me. And instead the Honeycrisp is facing the fence and it doesn't grow. I don't know why, but anyways, my apple tree is a mess. And I don't know, do we give up on the apple tree. Now we're looking at redoing our backyard. I would just want to put in a trampoline. There's nowhere to put the trampoline unless we cut down the apple tree, but I'm like, it's not a great apple tree. And it do, when do we start over? You know, it's really a bummer to have to cut down a tree that has now been growing for five years and is finally starting to kind of have its act together to some small degree. Um, what happens when we start over? you know? Um, but the thing is that it's possible to start over there. There are very few things in life that is completely impossible to 
to try again or to start over or to do differently. And yeah, a lot of the times when we have to do that, we have to say goodbye to some big stuff. And that is not very fun. It's not fun to walk away from a job that you've been in for decades or um, to walk away from a house that you've invested a lot in and and do the next stage of your journey. I don't know. Whenever we're making big changes, it is rarely super, super easy, right? But sometimes it is the right thing. And even when we have to start over from scratch and from absolutely nothing, I just really believe that when it's the right thing, everything else works out for us. So today is a big invitation to really sit down with yourself and get introspective and start looking at the decisions that have led you here or the apathy that has led you here or the tolerance that has led you here. What in your life is going great? What in your life is not going not so great? What changes would you have to make? What what scares you about those changes? What are you afraid of? When you are when you know what you're afraid of, then go through and write down what is actually likely to happen. Okay. So yeah, I'm afraid of this, 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 but how often does this actually happen? And you can go and Google statistics, okay? Um, talk to people that have done this and and just get some actual data on how likely are my fears to come true. And then when you have that you know, write about what you would do in those worst case scenarios. If you made all these changes and this is the worst case scenario, what would I do? Um, the this, this exercise can just be so powerful because a lot of times we're afraid of a lot of things that are not real. I just got back from taking my kids to Ashton Gardens in Lehigh, Utah, where they have a thing called Uncharted Worlds right now. And they had a reptile show and it was pretty good. I really liked it. And the reptile show guy... Uh, has a degree in psychology and is a reptile guide. He's been doing this forever. And at the end, he said, okay, everybody, we need to talk about this. You know, how often do people get snake bites? And you watch through, there's like 8,000 snake bites a year, five fatalities, and also something like 80% of people that get bit by snakes are drunk at the time. And 90% of snake bites are on the hand because they're actively trying to grab the snake's head. Um, he's like, don't be drunk. Don't try to grab a venomous snake's head. But if you do, you'll probably live. And he said, um, you know, if he said, I have a degree in psychology. And if you are scared of animals, then I need you to come and talk to me after this presentation. Because the fact is that most animals are not dangerous. And I would hate for you to live your life terrified of something that doesn't even exist. And I loved that. Yes, we are. We all live our lives terrified of things that don't even exist. I fully include myself in that statistic. So many of the things that I have felt scared of in my life aren't even real. <laughs> They're not even real. You know, these are figments of my own imagination, right? And how much of what you are afraid of is actually a figment of your imagination? It hasn't happened. The chances of it happening are super slim. And yet you are still afraid. It's time to break out of that because why why should we live in fear over things that aren't even real? It doesn't even make sense. So today is the day I invite you to harness this power of Mercury retrograde and dig into that and start clearing it out. What are you afraid of? What is the worst case scenario? How would you handle it? Dig into it. Even though it is scary, you will find so much freedom on the other side of that. And of course, at the end of it, we take it all back to our creator and say, okay, God, give me any additional insights. You know, I did the hard work of using my brain and researching and, and working through what I think would happen. God, what other insights do you have for me about the changes that I would make right now? There we go. That That's where the magic happens. So the whole point of this challenge was to help us uh, make some huge shifts in our lives. And I'm really hopeful that... Uh, that you're feeling like you're having big shifts. Um, I'm hopeful that this exercise in particular will help you have some big shifts. And uh, let me see, 13, 14, 15. Today should be day 15. And I think I have a live session scheduled for this exact challenge today. So go ahead and check that link below if you want to have like a whole hour with me live um, recording this session just about this kind of issue. Show up. It is worth it. And we're going to have a good time. Okay. Um, there you have it, guys. I hope you have a good day. You can work through your fears and you can move ahead. You can say goodbye to things that you have um, built up over a long period of time and you don't have to be invested in those things forever. Okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.